Hi guys, I just wanted to do a quick video of our artist spotlight for this week. We are studying value and then artists that focused on value to make their work. So we're studying three different artists, Leonardo da Vinci, Caravaggio, and Banksy. The first artist is Leonardo da Vinci. He's from Italy around the Italian Renaissance. He's actually one of the most famous artists of the Italian Renaissance. Um, there's a group of artists, Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael. They're three famous painters. They're from roughly around the same city, the city of Florence, and they move to Rome. Leonardo da Vinci goes to France, but they're all at the same place at the same, roughly the same time. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci will be known from the group as having the most curious mind. Leonardo da Vinci is famous for painting this painting. Do you know the name of it? He's also famous for this drawing of the Vitruvian man. And then there's many different versions of the Last Supper. This is Leonardo's version, which is the most iconic probably. Okay, but I wanted to talk to you about Leonardo da Vinci's idea about shadows. So Leonardo da Vinci had this idea or he figured out that if you're doing a painting and you make the shadows really dark it helps to make the object look three-dimensional now making objects look three-dimensional or having volume is really important in realistic art because you're just painting on a canvas or doing a drawing on a paper it's flat our goal one of our goals is to make it look three-dimensional so this idea of da Vinci, making the shadows dark, is really important to us. Um, we can see this idea as it grew in his artwork. So on the left, we have an early painting that he did. And on the right, we have a much later painting that he did. On the right, it's actually a close-up cropped in view of one of his bigger paintings. But in both paintings, it's a woman, right? The one on the left, the earlier one, I want to say it looks a little flatter than the one on the right. He has more dramatic shadows. You can even look like at the eyes, how much more shadows he has on the right and how that looks more, I don't know how to say it, like more round or more realistic, more like she's coming out at us. This idea. It has a name and it's called chiaroscuro. Chiaroscuro is Italian. Chia is light, scuro is shadow. And it just means using light and shadow to make a figure look three dimensional. And again, this is one of da Vinci's main things he figured out in his life. This is shown in probably his most famous painting that I hope you already knew, the Mona Lisa. Okay, I love art history, so I'm not gonna stop there. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci had a very curious mind and so he wanted to figure out how figures work or how the human body works. So he was able to get cadavers from a church which was connected to a hospital and do dissect secret dissections to figure out the muscle system and the skeletal system. Um, it's a terrible like grisly story but the drawings are beautiful that we get from it. These are pages from his notebook that he kept uh, from these dissections. And then he kept the same curious mind. He brought it to everything he did. So he would all, he's also famous as an inventor um, in just this idea of studying how things work. Um, but again, what I want us to get from Leonardo da Vinci, you make your shadows dark and the things look more 3D. Okay, the next artist I wanted to briefly mention to you guys is Caravaggio. Caravaggio is living in Italy also, but a hundred years after Leonardo da Vinci. So the Renaissance has already come and gone. It's now Baroque art in Rome. That's where Caravaggio is gonna move to. Um, 
in the 1600s. They're building tons of churches all over Rome and they need new paintings to decorate their churches. So Caravaggio moves there in order to try to become famous. This is not done by Caravaggio. This is a painting done by the Caracci brothers, but it's just, I wanted to show you the art that was really popular when Caravaggio comes on the scene. So during the Renaissance, they figured out, like artists like da Vinci, figured out how to make figures look really realistic. And so when those artists passed away and a new group of artists came, they didn't really know how to improve on that. Like how do you draw better or paint better than Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo? So what these artists did is they said, well, we'll just put tons of figures in one painting. Like we'll cram it with figures. And so Baroque art is known for really light, for light colors and then just also tons of action, tons of people. So the Karachi brothers even have Check it out, like people coming from the sky, like little cupids or people flying down. It's all about cramming it with people. Caravaggio looks at this and he's like, I hate it. So he does something totally different. He takes Da Vinci's idea of shadows and Caravaggio enlarges it to do the whole painting. So Caravaggio's paintings get known for this sense of really dramatic light and dark cutting in. And then he's also doing this, like all kinds of weird things that I could go on and on about, but um, he's uniting like Bible times with current day. So this is a picture uh, from the Bible, it's for a church. And uh, we had the figure of Jesus and probably an apostle, we're not really sure, on the right. Jesus is the guy wearing a halo and the finger pointing. And then he's trying to get someone who's the least likely person to follow Jesus, a tax collector, to come and follow him. So he's pointing at someone, right? Now, the figures on the right are dressed in Bible clothes, and Caravaggio puts the figures on the left, that group, in his current day clothes. So it would be like seeing a Bible painting, but people wearing clothes from nowadays. So Caravaggio gets known for this like sense of light and dark, and then also this like weird realism. There's also weird things like the figure of Jesus, like that pointed hand, here's a close up of it is an exact copy of, is an exact, we would say, reference to Michelangelo's creation of Adam from, you know, the Sistine Chapel. Um, this, again, it's a Renaissance painted, painting painted a hundred years earlier. Okay, but Caravaggio is going to go on and do these like crazy violent, very often very violent paintings uh, with really dramatic light and dark. And then like people are shocked by this and it changes art history because artists see this and it's so different than this, right? <laughs> that artists are like, oh no, I wanna paint like that. But the public is kind of split on it. Not everyone likes this artwork. So like the bishops and the cardinals that are commissioning these paintings for their churches, they're often not impressed. So like in this painting, if we do a close up of the people's feet, we have dirty feet, right? And so the bishop gets this painting and he's like, I have a brand new church. It's filled with like marble columns and you're giving me a painting of Mary and Jesus and these people with dirty feet in my church. I don't want this. Like they want maybe like Mary and the baby Jesus in heaven, surrounded by cupids and like really bright blue colors, but that's not what Caravaggio does. Caravaggio is famous at this time though, so if they don't want the painting, someone else will. So he just keeps on painting how he wants to paint. This is another rejected painting that he does. It's for a group of nuns who want a painting um, for their convent of the death of the Virgin in the Catholic Church. Again, these are paintings in Italy. 
uh, where the Catholic Church is really popular in the 1600s, um, the Virgin means Mary. So um, you could think that probably the nuns, when they went to Caravaggio and said, we want a painting of the death of Mary, probably again, picturing a woman in blue laid out horizontally with all these people crying, but also like cupids maybe or something. And this is what Caravaggio gives them. So they reject this painting. And then it's even more complicated than that because not only is he painting with like this dramatic light and shadow and this total realism, He's also rejecting uh, typical models and he's using his friends to model. And then there's even stories that his figure, the model he used for Mary, was actually a drowned prostitute from the city that someone had found. And so uh, of course, like now we look at it and we're like, of course the nuns rejected it. What was he thinking? So that's Caravaggio. Okay, I said Caravaggio likes violent subjects. Um, he also unfortunately likes violence in his life. So if you ever want to write about an artist, Caravaggio is your guy. Uh, he's, as he's getting more and more famous in Rome, he's also getting arrested and the charges are escalating. So he gets arrested for carrying a knife, arrested for getting in a fight, arrested for stabbing someone. Then he gets arrested uh, for murder. He gets in a fight, there's someone dead, there's multiple witnesses, and they all say Caravaggio killed him. The famous painter Caravaggio did this, which it's supposedly totally true. And so the police uh, say, okay, if anyone finds Caravaggio and brings him to a police station, you will get a reward. If you find Caravaggio and you kill him and bring in his head, you will also get a reward. So Caravaggio has to leave Rome and le live the rest of his life just jumping from city to city in Italy doing paintings. Um, it's a crazy life, but again, the, the paintings are crazy in themselves. <laughs> like they're so beautiful, but, and so realistic, but also, yeah, I don't, there's something tragic, right? To the life and to the painting. So this is a painting of St. John the Baptist being beheaded. It's another Bible story. It's another very popular painting in art history, but Caravaggio paints it different. Um, there's a, so the story is basically an innocent man is being killed for the greed of someone else. Uh, but Caravaggio paints it with some kind of like sorrow going on, right? And then freakishly enough, the only time he signs a painting is he uses the blood, the red paint, which would be the blood of the neck, he signs his name. His name is actually Michelangelo Caravaggio. So, um, yes, I don't even know what to say about that. There's some kind of weird attraction to violence, but then also sorrow about it that comes across in the art. Okay, but he'll live the rest of his life, and it's not that long, uh, moving from city to city, just doing paintings, and then getting thrown in jail for fighting, escaping jail, going to the next city, getting thrown in jail again. But the paintings are incredible, and they're always, always filled with this, like, dramatic light and dark. So Car different artists like different things. Caravaggio is an artist that really cares about value, and his paintings are based on the sense of light and dark. Personal testimony time. I was lucky enough to go to Rome. And when you're in Rome, you uh, can see some museums, but a lot of times you just go to different churches and see all these amazing paintings in the different churches. But after a day of seeing like all different churches, I love art history, but even I am like, Oh, another painting, another painting. But you go into a church and you see Caravaggio's paintings and it's still so beautiful and so overwhelming. So like 400 years later, they still just like cause you to stop what you're doing and look at. It's, they're amazing. This idea of the light and dark 
and the way he painted it's the like i can't say it with words it's beautiful okay last story about caravaggio then we're moving on um He's jumping around in Italy, and then he hears that there is a cardinal in Rome, and the cardinal is working with the Pope to try to get Caravaggio's murder charge forgiven. So if Caravaggio can get back to Rome, he'll probably be forgiven. So Caravaggio does a painting for the cardinal, gets on a boat to sail up the coast of Italy to return back to Rome, but then something happens on the boat, and Caravaggio is thrown off the boat. Probably he got another fight. Uh, so he starts walking back to Rome, but uh, he dies on, in walking in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so the boat makes it back to Rome. Everything is unloaded, and the Cardinal gets this painting by Caravaggio. And it's a painting of David with the head of Goliath. It's a Bible story, it's really famous. But this David and the head of Goliath is totally different than anything else. Usually, David, it's the story of like a little guy winning over a big guy, the giant. So usually David is like really jubilant, really happy, triumphant. This David is not triumphant. This David seems sad and maybe like resigned, like he had to do what he had to do. And the head of Goliath is a self-portrait of Caravaggio. Crazy, right? Okay, but what I want you guys to get from Caravaggio is that like Leonardo da Vinci has shadows to make things darker and then Caravaggio uses this whole idea. Light and shadow can actually make a really interesting drawing overall. Okay, and then the last artist I briefly wanted to talk about is Banksy. You might have heard of him. Banksy is a famous street artist. He's current. Uh, he got popular in the early 2000s, and some of his pieces are really well known. So as I go through, I'm just showing you a couple. There might be some you recognize. This is one of his earliest pieces, and what Banksy is doing is he's a street artist. So he's not usually working in a gallery. He's at home and he'll cut a stencil, probably using paper or if you want to use your stencil, more plastic. And then he goes outside illegally, so don't do this. He illegally sprays black paint over it to make a figure. And then maybe, usually Banksy, it's almost always black and white with maybe one other color. So this is from LA. I don't know if it's still there, but Banksy's now so famous that usually if he paints something, it stays because it's worth, now a building would be worth millions if a Banksy painting is on it. He uses the motif of a rat, of rats a lot. So this is from Paris. It's one of my favorite ones. And then Banksy is popular because he takes street art like almost to another level. So there's usually some kind of polit political viewpoint or social commentary going on. But again, it's grounded in this really simplest, not simplistic, this really simple light and dark with one other color. If you ever are like bored, look up Banksy's uh, web page and you can just sit there it's so amazing his artwork okay banksy moved from street art to do gallery art if you're a street artist this is kind of questionable where some people uh who loved banksy before were like oh he's a gallery artist now he's making millions of dollars but um even his gallery art is still uh, there's a lot of social commentary going on so this is an earlier piece from 2004 and then this is his latest piece. This is actually about George Floyd. So um, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys three different artists, all who use value a lot in their artwork. Okay, thanks. Hope you guys have a good day.